Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and today is the beginning of the Power Apps Container Series. Woohoo! Now, I've been looking forward to recording these series of videos for you all, so the time has finally arrived, and I'm really excited on this. Now, this is the first video, so it's more of an introduction and a basic layout, which means I'll introduce the whole concept of Power Apps containers, you know, what exactly is this control, and then also show you an example of how the basic layout of controllers have such an effect on the app itself. But first, here's my intro video. So the key items that I want to cover this video first starts off by explaining exactly what a container is and why I should use it. So the container was actually introduced late 2020, around October, November over here. And I remember Emma Cooper was the first one who actually you know, published that article. So, hey, thanks, Emma. I'm really excited about this. Um, and over there, the explanation was so neat because when they described container, they said that when you think about container, the next word that should come to your mind is responsive because the way you want to imagine it is container is actually a boundary and any other control that sits inside the boundary of this container automatically becomes responsive. And obviously there's a couple of things you need to do, but when you think about container, think about responsive. And when you think about responsive, everything inside the boundary is by default responsive. Now, I also want to cover a little bit about the difference between a container and groups, and I'll jump into a demo of that. I actually want to do a slide-by-side -side comparison. I'll spend a few minutes showing you that, but I do want to co cover that because there is that little similarity between the two, but the two are so much more different over there. And then we'll briefly cover about some limitations in something that you should be aware of, and then I'll show you the example of the basic layout. All right, so let's go and jump into uh, the demo, and I'm actually going to show you what is the difference between the container and the group. So... First, I want to jump into my Power App uh, Studio. So here it is. I've already gone ahead and you know gone into the studio and I've already done that stuff. So we didn't spend any time on that. But first thing I want to do is I want to start with something we already know. So one of the things I do, I, I do grouping a lot with the uh, buttons. So um, I'll just go over here and I'll go ahead and drop some buttons. Now, as you can see, the buttons have dropped and they've kind of lined up in a separate way and it all, all is good. And what I have to do is in order to group them, I can't just highlight it in any way. So I got to select that. I got to hold my shift button down and I go ahead and select all the other ones. I right click on that and I go ahead and group it. So this is how grouping works just to add and put them together, like put, group them together. Now let's go and do an example of the container. Now in order to do the container, you got to start getting familiar with this insert over here. You go on that, the, the tree view kind of thing shows up over here. Then you want to go into layout and in layout, you can go ahead and get your two containers. So if I take out this example, I'm going to use the vertical container. It, com it comes over here. Now I can go back over here and you can see the container is here. I can grab it, you know, expand it, whatever. But now that I've actually selected the container, watch me drop some of the four buttons. So I do one, two, three, and four. And see, they all lined up inside automatically. And it's still the same concept of grouping them together, but this group is a lot more cleaner, all right? But we'll, we'll focus on the layout uh, differently. So that's the big uh, um, uh, similarity, that they both go ahead and group them together. Group does it, container does it, the big similarity between the two. But here's something else though, is now if I were to go ahead and say, I wanna add another button into that group. So instinctively, I would select it, I would go ahead and click another button, it doesn't go into that group. It actually goes outside over here. Well, let me try something else. Let me delete that. I'm going to select inside a button. And let me try now clicking button, which hopefully it goes in the group. But it doesn't. It actually goes outside again. So it's got that one annoying thing where I've taken all this time to group it. I might even apply some formulas to its width and everything. But if I need to add something else to that, i got to ungroup it, select that new whatever control it is, and then group it back over here. So that's in the group section. In my containers, all I've done is gone ahead and selected the container. And if I want to add that fifth button, I just click on it and it beautifully, beautifully, I, I mean, I can't think of any other words. It just beautifully goes ahead and just locks itself inside and, pick, and becomes part of it. So I kind of wanted to show you these, this example is that, yes, they are, they are the same, but in, in, the, in the sense that they go and put them together, but they are two really different things. Grouping does help to maintain some consistency in some of the properties like visible, uh, making it you know, higher and at the same time. You can do some X and Y coordinating stuff over there, but containers is a whole separate ball game. Yes, I can go ahead and group things together, 
But even when it comes to grouping, it is so ahead of the curve because it goes and maintains some consistency of the design and the layout. It really is the next level of group if, if you know if, if you if that's the best way I can describe it over here. So that is the difference between the container and the group. Now I want to touch base a little bit, little bit about the uh, the limitation piece over here, and I, and I like the way the limitation is actually explained already in the article. And what I want to talk about is um, not all of it, but in in the uh, most important ones that I want want you to think about is this in this known issues is the concept of a couple of containers not being responsive right now. Um, and obviously over the period of time, I'm confident this will you know change. But right now. The three big things that uh, controls that you cannot do uh, do not fall or are not responsive is the data table, the charts, and the pictures. These three just do not work over there. But there's a couple of other things that I want you to be f familiar with over here because that's going to help. You know, that, that's if you are more used to the person who drops the control and then you know you know, drags them or increases the size and things like that. Um, when it comes to adding controls inside the containers, you're going to have to get comfortable with the properties section over there. Uh, because you, once you drop a contain um, a control in a container, you can't really drag and drop. You got to play around with the properties over there, and that's basically what it is saying over here: is that you can't resize or reposition the controllers on uh, app because the drag and drop controls are disabled in the layout containers. So that's that's huge. All right, you need to know that. Um, I'm when I'm emphasizing on that because when I start playing with it, I drop the control and it just doesn't work. You got to play with the properties over there. And the other thing is the tree view. Um, you're going to get familiar with the tree view really fast when you play with controls over there. But when controls are moved in and out of a um, layout container, they are inserted into the container by the order in the tree. So if you drop a new one, it automatically, I mean, add a new control inside the container, it'll fall below. And that's how the ordering works over here. Now, there's other things about what is, you know, the, the combinations of layout containers. If you use a couple of combinations, uh, it doesn't work. Um, and again, this is in the, in the initial phases over here. But the big ones I wanted you to uh, wanted to cover, I've already covered them, and I'll put this link in the description below so you can go and take a look at that. So now that I've shown you, I've given you an introduction over there. I want to start and actually show you an example that I have. So here is my um, uh, a simple screen, and I've gone ahead and used um, a combination of containers over here. So you can see that I've got basically. Let me go ahead and uh, expand this one. It's actually a combination of the. Um, uh, this container, the horizontal containers, and then the vertical containers. And and what I love about this is that you can put them one below the other or one inside the other and really get the full responsiveness. And if you want to just get start playing with it, you don't even have to figure out what I need to do, which needs to figure out all that. Don't worry about it. Just come to the top left in a new screen, and you've already got three different container, um, three different screens with the containers predefined for you. So you can actually go and start playing with that. In fact, for the example over here, I did. I started off with the sidebar one. I tweaked it a little bit, but I started off with that one over here. And you can do the exact same thing. Now, what you can do is inside each and every one of them, and you add, you know, inside and all that, you kind of mix and match. You have to figure out how the layout works, and you got to do a little bit of combinations. And that is what I'm going to focus a lot in the series of these videos. I'm going to take a little bit of them in little chunks and walk you through of that. But the overall effect is is this. So watch this. When I go ahead and you know play, and I say now hit just the minimize. Watch this. Well, wait. What, what just happened? I mean, I haven't too fast. Let me, let me go ahead and maximize it, and just watch these three away. The description, progress, priority department, start and end. What happened? They were actually spread out, and now I mean, I go ahead and minimize it. It automatically became responsive, and not even this. The, those three. You see the gap over here. See all of this thing. It by default became responsive. So if I were just to even increase it, see, it becomes responsive. And you can actually see it becoming responsive. See how these things shrink and become smaller and bigger and whatnot. See that? It's actually becoming responsive over there. And this is the beauty of containers. Remember what I say? As long as you're inside the boundary of this control, all the other controls automatically become responsive. And this is huge. This is beautiful. And so what I'm going to do is I just want to quickly give you an overview of what I did over here. Uh, in the beginning, I went ahead and dropped a one big control uh, container. Remember what I said? One big one in its boundaries. That's what I did. In that, I broke it down into two other ones. I went ahead and put this sidebar con container, and I went ahead and added this one over here. And you got to go ahead and play around with the combination of, you know, how which one needs to be bigger, which one needs to be smaller. I'll explain that to you in another videos over here. But then in this one, the, um, the sidebar to the left, 
I just went ahead and dropped a text bar on the top. I went ahead and dropped a gallery in it, connected it to another data source over here. After that, I went ahead and did this one over here. On the right sidebar, it's actually a combination. I have one on the top containers over here. In below, I've got another container, and it's all getting you know lined up all nicely over there. On the top one, the one over uh, the one over here, it is a horizontal one, which means all the containers when I drop something, it just goes and drops, 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 drops. It'll drop in a very horizontal fashion. And this one over here, same thing. But when I dropped it, it just dropped, 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 dropped. It became that way. And after I went ahead and changed a few of the tweaked a few of these properties, that's what made it nice and um, you know responsive over here. One of the important things that you got to do is you got to go to file, you got to go into settings, and in the settings you got to go into um, uh, uh, screen orientation, and you just got to make sure that under advanced settings you've gone ahead and made these settings over here because without that settings you don't get the responsiveness effect to it so that's why you see the scale to fit is gone ahead and turned off lock orientation is gone ahead and turned off and then all said and done this is basically how i was able to achieve this effect over here and you know this new functionality that you can actually see the full app as is um, and it's been a building it in the studio but if you've selected a certain layout if you use this new feature over here then you can see what that layout is whether it's a, you know, um, a tablet one or whether it's a phone one you get to see that and normally, if I did not use a container, you would notice a drastic difference over here. Like right now, it looks the exact same. It's just concise in size, but it looks the exact same. But if I didn't have the container effect, I bet you what would happen is that these things, I mean, you would normally see a big white space over here, and you would see these things all you know, messed up in their, in their layout because it's not happening over here because I've gone ahead and used the container effect over that. So hopefully this video has caught your interest. It definitely is then taking your layout and the UI and UX of your apps to the next level. So I highly recommend that you start playing into it. Now in the next video, I'm going to start off by actually showing just creating a simple home screen. In the home screen, I'm even going to show you how you can add your menu bar. And I'll actually show you with some examples. Like right now, you would just add some buttons lined out. And what's that difference over there? Um, I'll also show you how some of the techniques that I've done is when I go ahead and add that in the gallery, what was the main difference between adding buttons in a gallery versus adding the buttons in the container and the pros and cons on that? I'll walk you through that in the next video. So hopefully this was helpful to you. And as always, keep power apping.